John Wick, Nobody Taken, another revenge tale coming to your screens, but this one is slightly different. Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional. This is Dave from Nerdbox, and I'm accompanied by my wife, Jen, also from Nerdbox. And on this episode, we are talking about God is a Bullet. So fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. and you're watching the Popcorn Confessional on the Nerd Box. <laughs> Sounds like a porn site. After his daughter is kidnapped during a brutal home invasion that leaves his ex-wife dead, Detective Bob Hightower, a religious man, is contacted by Case Harden, a former member of a cult who traffics and or kills young girls. Hightower decides to take matters into his own hands when his chief refuses to believe that his lead is looking to help them and that she may have an ulterior motive. Case and Hightower slip into the underworld in hopes of finding his daughter while trying to cling to his faith before it's too late. God is a Bullet is based off of a novel of the same name by Boston Turan. Pretty cool name. And it will lead you to believe in the beginning that it is based on true events. But by the time the end credits roll and after you've seen the film, you kind of know that it's maybe inspired a little bit by true events, but everything is over dramatized in this film, including a lot of the kills. I think that's normal though, when they turn something into a film. And that's just to protect the people that were involved. Oh, I think a lot more of those change other than names because some of the things that happen in this film just seem a little bit far-fetched that be happening in real life. Well, I think the reason they seem far-fetched is because this is not a cult any more than it's just a gang. That's all they are. They're not a cult. How does that skinny little nothing run a cult that everyone in this whole state is afraid of? Give me a break. <laughs> He's, he's not terrifying at all. He looks dumb as hell with all his face tattoos. I don't know. It, it's not a cult, in my opinion. It's a gang. And here's where it kind of loses me a little bit because they kind of delve into, like, tarot cards a little bit and, you know, talking about Satan and all that stuff. So I guess that kind of makes you a cult, but it doesn't really dive into it, right? This kind of borders along the lines of eight millimeter and what that was. It just doesn't make you feel as dirty watching it or doesn't, cause as it pulls you in, it quickly just, it's like, all right, we're not gonna take it. And then it there. puts the brakes on. Yes. Yeah, I mean, first of all, using tarot cards, that doesn't mean you're in a cult. So don't anyone get that twisted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I think was way embellished because you know, I mean, and as far as them worshiping a Satan, they didn't really touch on it a whole lot. So you have the theme of, you know, sort of a re revenge movie, almost like the last Rambo movie, right? Rambo's going to Mexico to find his his daughter, bring her back and so forth. Same same yeah. premise here, only in this one here, you have Hightower, who is a Bible thumper, not a hardcore one, but he believes that God's gonna save all and there's a purpose for yeah. things. And he has to kind of deal with those prejudices that some of these people actually have in real life, mm -hmm. where like, oh, don't you say that, God will smite you. Yeah, yeah. So you have a former cultist, Mm -hmm. possibly wor worshiping Satan. And then you have a Bible thumper and a car, and it sounds like a really good joke. Agata is a Bullet is very character driven and it has a great cast. Yeah, I mean, it's got Nicola Costa Waldo as Bob Hightower, Maika Monroe as Case Harden. She was in It Follows and Watcher. And then the guy who plays her like nemesis who runs this cult, Cyrus, yeah. was in Watcher with her. It was her husband, I believe. Mm -hmm. Jamie Foxx is in it. Ethan Supley, Jonathan Tucker. It's got a really big cast. Yeah, I'll tell you, Maika Monroe is talented. She does, and we talked about this with Watcher. Mm -hmm. Like when she's on screen, she has a presence. Yeah. And you know, the, her character is like, a, an ex junkie, she's a slime ball. And he's like, oh, you know, I wouldn't want to touch her because I'm afraid I'm going to catch like 15 diseases or something. But yeah. she just pulls it off so perfect. And with yeah. her performances, it's not like she's acting, it almost feels natural. Mm -hmm. Like with Mia Goth in Infinity Pool, it kind of felt like she was acting and trying to really deliver a really good part. Mm -hmm. Where Maika Moreau and her parts, it just seems to come flawlessly with her. 
Yeah, I She's not well, annoying. She's not annoying. Sorry, Mia Goth lovers. We're not big fans of hers. She can be really annoying at times, especially when she's trying too hard. Yeah. And I feel like that's what she does and she doesn't need to. I really think she could be really good if she didn't try so hard. Maika Monroe, I feel, is a lot like Mia Goth. She even has kind of the same look as her. She's a lot taller. She plays Case in this and yes. that character tends to have a lot of annoying qualities yes. too, but it's not like, oh, it's an over the top performance. It really no. makes it annoying. Yeah. No, you actually, even though, you know, in many ways she is, you know, a sleazeball for the things that she has done in her past, you really do feel for her in this in this movie. At mm. least I did. You know, I felt bad for her. I did. I, she went through a lot, and then she went through even more when she put herself back into the situation to help this little girl. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I. she pulls you in. She's good. Jonathan Tucker did a very good job in the movie. He was very entertaining as a sleaze ball that run the, runs the club. And was then, that Errol? Yeah. Well, I like, I mean, now he's really big. Jonathan Tucker's been in many things. And I do like him as an actor. I thought he was hilarious in the movie. He wasn't meant to be, I don't think. But he was a big crybaby, screamed like a girl, like a legit girl. Whenever something bad happened, I liked him. Ethan Suffley, he did a great job. He made me feel very dirty in the one scene where it, you'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he did a really good job. I do like Ethan Suffley. I think he's really underrated. Mike and Monroe. Uh, the Cyrus dude, he's, I don't like, he's not good. Well, I think if you take Mike and Monroe out of this movie, it's probably really bad. Yeah. She really carries a lot of the film. And mm -hmm. again, she has presence. She pulls you into the movie and it's like, oh man, I want to see what happens now. I'm more interested in this character than really the father fighting the daughter because I just want to see how everything plays out in her yeah. story. Now, there is some gore in it. There are some cool kill scenes. Yeah. There's one at the end that's pretty damn awesome. Shotgun <laughs> to the face. Oh boy, wait till you see it. Uh, that one is pretty yeah. good. There's a shotgun to a face and then, oh my God, a hand coming up out of the dirt. Mm hmm wonder where we've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is in theaters now. It's probably not going to be there too long because it's, you know, not one of the major films. And you got a lot of big films and heavy hitters that are out there right now. Yeah, and I'm actually shocked that it even came to our local theater. Me too. <laughs> because they don't get, you know, some of the really big ones and then they get this one, which was... Had I not seen it on the Cinemark website initially, I would have never even heard of it. Mm -hmm. It's not like we've never seen a trailer for it. In all the movies we've gone to see, there was never a trailer for it. So, oh, January Jones is in the movie, too. Yep. I will say this, since, you know, we do not rate things that are inspired by true stories, while I have my doubts about the true story on this one, if you're looking for something different to see and you have a movie pass or it's discount Tuesday night, then go see this in the theaters because it's a refreshing break from everything else that's out in the theater right now. Otherwise, you could probably wait for it to come to a streaming platform. It's definitely not like anything that's out right now. I mean, of course, there's a lot of uh, animated films out right now, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, Spider-Man, Transformers, you know, all that stuff is going on. So there, there are not a lot of big options uh, other than those types of movies, which are kind of family movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, I would say watch it at home if you possibly can. It is two and a half hours long. It didn't feel like it. I honest. thought it did. <laughs> so there were moments where it was kind of like, I was getting a little like antsy and I was like, is this gonna end? Like what's happening? So yeah, I, I would just say watch it at home if you can. I think Hollywood has to get off this two and a half hour kick. They do. <laughs> Almost I every movie that comes out is two, two and a half hours, three hours. Like, yeah. no, yeah. an I mean, hour and a half is yeah. good. Yeah. And we saw four movies this past week, and I want to say that only one was under the two-hour mark, mm. and all the rest were over the two-hour mark, yep. which is insane to me. And then we have more movies coming up that are, you know, I mean, Indiana Jones, two hours and 45 minutes, uh, or two hours and 35 minutes, I don't know. Mission Impossible, two hours and 45 minutes. Like, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. They need to get it. Mission Impossible, I can probably sit through for that long because it's going to be nonstop action, which is, that's fine. But some of these other movies, man, Hollywood, like, it doesn't have to be two and a half hours. You can cut it off at the two-hour mark for some of these, I think, and and some of them under. Yeah, yeah. I, sometimes you really don't have to go too far into detail with story. No, no. So. Especially because 
this particular movie, they didn't go into a lot of- Didn't go into the right detail. Anyway, don't forget that you have to do a couple of things. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Yes, we know you're either watching this on the couch or watching this on the toilet. So you have a second to go ahead and click the like button and drop a little comment because-